Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. Use the epsilon delta definition of the limit to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of 4x plus 1 is equal to 1. Okay, so epsilon delta definitions of limits. So it might seem a little bit daunting to start off with because there's so many symbols and inequalities and absolute values everywhere. But let's let's try to break it down in this video and start off with a simple example and we'll go on to some harder ones later. Okay, so let's first of all just recall the definition, the epsilon, the precise definition of a limit. So it says that the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists and equals L if and only if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero so that whenever zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a which is less than delta we have that the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. Okay so Let's see what we have. We're, we're looking at this here, and it's of this form. So let's write down what our a is, our f of x, and what our l is. So in our example, a is well, 0, f of x is 4x plus 1, 4x plus 1, and l is equal to 1. Okay, now, summing these into here, what we want, we want to find, so we want to find some delta. We just need to show that there is a value of delta greater than zero, such that now we can plug it into here such that 0 is less than x minus 0 which is pretty much just x so the absolute value of x less than delta will imply that 4x plus 1 minus 1 is less than epsilon okay so that's what we're looking for Alright, so the trick with these types of questions is to start here and work backwards. And then we can see the steps that we need to solving the problem. So, let's start off with what we want. So, we want to eventually end up with this. Something implying this. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify what's inside these absolute values. So, as you can see... Obviously, this 1 and minus 1 will cancel, and we'll be left with the absolute value of 4x is less than epsilon. Okay, we can take the 4 outside of the absolute value, and we're going to get 4 times the absolute value of x is less than epsilon. And we can divide both sides by 4, and we get x, or the absolute value of x, is less than epsilon on 4. Now... You'll see that this here is really the absolute value of x, isn't it? x minus 0, well that's just x. So we have the absolute value of x here. But I'm going to just write it like this so we can see clearly what we want. So I can write this like this. Now, this absolute value is less than epsilon on 4. But since it's an absolute value, we can be sure that it's definitely positive. So we can say, therefore, 0 is less than this absolute value which is less than epsilon on 4. Now hopefully you can see why I've written it like this because this is almost identical to what we have up here. The only difference being that this here is a delta and this is epsilon on 4. So this might suggest to you that what we do is we let or maybe choose delta equal to epsilon on 4, and we should just say 4 epsilon greater than 0. So why do we do this? 
Well, if we do this, we're going to have 0 is less than x minus 0 is less than delta. So we're starting off with what we have here. And now we work towards proving or implying that this condition holds. So let's start off here. Now, since we let delta equal to epsilon 4, this was by our own free choice, which is what we actually need to do. We need to find and choose a delta. So we're choosing our delta to be epsilon on 4. So now this implies this statement here, which we get by just substituting our choice of delta in. And now you can see that we can work backwards from this step here. So we work backwards from this step to get back up to here. So this is going to imply, and we can multiply through by 4, which was the reverse of what we did here. So multiplying through by 4, we're going to get 0 is less than 4 times the absolute value of, now I'm just going to write this as the absolute value of x, should be quite obvious. Okay, let's get some more paper. Alright, so we have this, and now we can bring this 4 inside. Okay, and what else can we do? Well, if we add 1 and subtract 1 inside here, that's not going to make a difference to the value. So that's going to imply that this holds. So plus 1 and then minus 1. Maybe I'll write my 1s like this so you can distinguish it from the absolute value sign. Okay, but we can put brackets around this and that's not changing anything either. And so therefore we have that this statement here has implied this statement. So therefore, by choosing delta equal to epsilon on 4 for, for epsilon greater than 0, and this will hold for all epsilon greater than 0. So for, if you give us, if someone gives you any value of epsilon that's greater than 0, and you choose your delta to be epsilon on 4, this inequality or this proof will work. So by choosing delta equal to epsilon on 4, we get that this here is implying this here, which is essentially what we wanted to get by the epsilon delta definition. And so therefore, this is our a, this is our f of x, and this is our l. So we can say, therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of the function 4x plus 1 is in fact equal to 1. Okay? And that's the end of the question. So you can see, epsilon delta proofs they are a bit tricky, but they're definitely doable, especially when we're working with linear functions like 4x plus 1. Now, they do get harder when we have stuff like trig functions or quadratic functions, but we'll see how to do those in later videos as well. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.